Jesus in, in, in this celebration because he has been forgotten. It's everything else except Jesus, the Christmas tree, the gifts, etc. But when the Messiah is lost, we want to understand that Christmas is the birth of Christ and bring him back in, in our celebrations. And remember that today is his birthday, right? When you have a birthday, what do you do? You think of a gift to give to the person who you are celebrating. And what kind of gifts should we be giving to Christ? Hmm? Heart. Yes. He requested that he said, My son, in the book of Proverbs 23, 26, he says, My son, give me your heart. And I remember Pope Shenouda, he said, when we give him our hearts, he fills it with love and purity and everything good, and he give it back to us. So, we give him our heart to clean it. We give him our heart to purify it. We give him our heart means we give him our true love. Okay? Which means that he is the only one abiding in our hearts. We may love everyone. And he actually asked us to love one another. But within his love, not outside of his love. Because once we love anyone or anything outside of his love, we lose him. When we love any sin more than Christ, then we lose him from our heart. When we, when we become addicted to anything, we love something more than Christ, which stops us from loving Him, we lose Him in our heart. So when He says, my son, give me your heart, it means that He is the only one in our heart. And we know that the only thing, the only one thing that makes a saint a true saint is when they give God all their heart. This is the only difference between any saint and any person. The saint is the one who gives God his heart, totally to God. And nothing competes with God's love in their heart. Nothing, not even oneself. Because sometimes the selfishness or the pride or the arrogance is the one thing that competes with God in our hearts. So, today if you really want to give Christ a, a true gift, give Him your heart with all your love and ask Him to purify this heart so that nothing of this world occupies this heart except Jesus Himself. But how can this happen? This can only happen when we understand and we truly believe who Christ is, right? Once, once He becomes a reality in our life, not just a theory, then this can happen. Because if, if He is something that we have been hearing about since our birth, or because we were baptized, because our parents baptized us and we grew up, grew up in the church, then we got used to coming to church, or the church became a part of our culture. So we come to church, we, we enjoy the church, we enjoy our friends, we enjoy even the service, but if you search deeply inside our hearts, and search for Christ, we find that there is no true relationship. Why? Because it is a routine kind of relationship. Routine, it means that we just do it because, we don't think about, we just do it because we do it. It's part of our life. It's part of our routine. It's like doing everything else that we do on a routine basis. But there is no deep relationship, there is no true understanding of who Christ is. 
the icon of the nativity explains it all to us because as you know that the icon is a way to illustrate our faith even to the uneducated the ones who who cannot read but can look at the icon and understand the story of the nativity so Number one, we see Christ born in a manger. What is the manger? The manger is the place where the animals eat. Al Mizwar bil Arabi. Gayam kilmit is zed. Zed yani bil Arabi. The food, right? So he was, ala fikra, al main, la wan yamatul al Mizwar, mish al makan, kul. المزود هو المكان بس اللي بياكلوا فيه ده مثلا اللي بيتحط فيه الاكل. اه حته عارفينها انتوا شفتوها؟ اللي يقصوا فيها التبن دي وبعدين الانيمال دي. ده اسمه المزود جايه من الزاد بتاع الفود يعني. بس اطلق الجزء على الكل. فممكن ان هو المكان كله اسمه المزود بس ات ريلي مينز ذات بليس وير ذا انيمالز ايت. فور تو ريزونز. Number one, because Christ came to be our food, he said, I am the bread which comes from above, so he came so we can eat him. For he's the place where the animals eat, but spiritually it is the because he is our food, our spiritual food. And also he was born in the manger because he is the Lamb of God. Like Saint John the Baptist said. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But as a lamb, he was born in the manger. And also he was born in a manger which is a very poor place to be born in. And all his life he lived as a poor person. Why? Because he was teaching us. Number one, that he came to everyone, because if he came, he was born in a castle, like the wise man taught, then he only came for the rich. But because he came for everyone, and he wanted to be reachable by every person, that's why he was born in the simplest place. Even the shepherds can come and see him. And also to teach us that real glory does not depend on what we have, what we wear, or what we possess, the real glory was manifested in that manger. Very strong message to us in nativity is the simplicity of life. Because Christ came and lived this very simple life from the poorest of the poor, St. Mary. We know why St. Mary was very poor. Turtle doves. This is, you know, it was it dependent on how rich you are, whatever you present. So she presented the gift of the poor because she was very poor. Only two turtle doves. But Saint Mary, she became the mother of God, although she is the poorest of the poor. But glory, كل مجد. All the glory of the daughter of the king is from within. And sometimes I think I'm going to buy something expensive. I shall show you the A. Ah, brands <تصفيق> فبنفتكر ان البراند نيمز هي اللي هتخليني ايه ابقى مهم او انا بقى لا شخصيتي ماي بيرسوناليتي هاو اي كاري ماي سيلف از وات ريلي ميكس مي ريسبكتبل بيرسون ماي ماي مورالز ماي اثكس يبقى ذس از ذا موست امبورتنت ثينج ذات وي ليرن فروم ذا مينجر We learn also that 
the star which guided the wise men. They came and said, where is the king, the newly born king? And the church insisted to put this story on today's feast, although there are many nativity stories in the Bible, but to tell us that it does not matter that Christ was born, but it matters who Christ is. What matters really is who Christ is. He is the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that's why the wise men came from far away. And when Herod, he asked them, where did you see the star? It means that when they saw the star, when he was born, it took them a while to come to Jerusalem. It was not easy to travel. And by the time they prepared themselves and started their journey and came from very far and reached Jerusalem, it was maybe about a year later. And that's why they speak of a child, not a newly born baby. And that's why when you see the icon with the shepherds and the wise men, it never happened in reality. They were never together. Because the shepherds came to see Jesus once he was born, but the wise men came much later. But maybe around, at least, مثلاً, let's say, around a year later, when Christ was in the house, not in the manger anymore. Okay? And God manifested himself to the wise men who are kings and philosophers, but also he manifested himself to the shepherds because he came to the wise and also came to the simple people. Everyone can reach him. And we also see the angels because they came to praise God and to say glory be to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill towards men because the birth of Christ was the birth of peace upon the earth as well. We see an elderly man whom God has appointed to care for the young girl, the saintly young girl, St. Mary. He was in his 80s, by the way, very old man. A righteous man whom God chose for this honor and a pure virgin, not married, and gave herself and her life to God. God told her that she will become the mother of the Most High. But most importantly, in the center, we see Jesus himself, whom we celebrate as our King and as our Lord. But my point is, do we remember all this today in our celebrations and sit for a few minutes and think, Jesus, my Lord, how can I honor you in my life? How can I give you my heart? How can I truly be your son or your daughter that manifests your light to the entire world? It's your light in my heart, not my own righteousness, but it's your righteousness that shines so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. How can my life becomes, become yours? This is the most important thing when, as we celebrate this feast and as we celebrate the beginning of the birth of Christ is the beginning of the story of our salvation which ends by his crucifixion on the cross. We understand how much God loves us because as one of the saints has said, imagine that God, because compelled by his love, took our humanity and all the functions that any human being goes through, right? When, like to eat and drink and be tired, weary, hear about Jesus being weary from the journey and hungry. And all, he went through all the human emotions for who? For us. And as St. Paul says, being 
uh, tempted himself, he understands what we go through. We can only relate to Christ as he became a human and he understand our suffering and our pain. And then we can relate to him and understand that he cares for us because he took our humanity. This is what I hope that we can all be thinking about today as we celebrate this blessed feast. Glory be to God forever. Amen. May 